April 12th, 1981. NASA engineers make final checks for STS-1, the first launch of the space shuttle Columbia. The radical new design is like nothing they've built before. The space transportation system is a radically new type of vehicle to fly in space. When you think of a, a spaceship or a rocket, you think of a sleek uh, design like the Apollo rocket. But the shuttle has, you know, these two solid rocket boosters and this big tank and then this thing that does kind of look like an airplane all kind of strapped together. It does not inspire confidence. Chief Engineer Charlie Mars carries the burden of getting the shuttle ready for launch. He has the double jeopardy that not only is this the first flight, it will also carry astronauts. We were probably under as much pressure, if not more, than anybody in the program to make sure that it wasn't gonna split like a banana peel on the pad. Astronauts John Young and Robert Crippen take on the challenge of flying the unproven shuttle. John will tell you it was untested. He said, Jerry, I thought if our odds were 50-50, that was being optimistic that we'd get back. At 0659, the astronauts prepare to put their courage to the test. 10, 9, 8, 7. When the clock hits seven seconds counting down, that's when the main engines start and the shuttle starts to rumble and shake and vibrate. The blast from the engines is so powerful it damages the shuttle. There was enough energy to actually bend struts and break things. That was definitely unexpected. Three, two, one, and lift it off. Clock hits zero and boom, it jumps off the pad. Lift off of Discovery and the first flight to retrieve and return satellites from space. It's kind of just low rumble that just kind of beats down inside you and you feel the power. But the shuttle is committed to orbit. Roger roll. Two minutes into the shuttle flight, the solid rocket boosters explode off. All of a sudden, now it feels like a dragster. Mach 2, Mach 4, Mach 8. It just continues to go faster and faster and faster. Young and Crippen successfully reach orbit. This glorious moment of wow, you know, I just sat on a rocket and I am in orbit, this is incredible. But the euphoria is short-lived. I looked through the window there in the back and they could see some tiles missing on some of the outer surfaces. It was very, very concerning. Off of the uh, starboard pod, we do have a, uh, a few tiles missing off of three uh, tile and some smaller pieces. Roger, Griff, we can see that good. The heat-resistant tiles protect the astronauts from being incinerated by the incredible 3,000-degree temperatures of re-entry. They're able to see the damage to the back of the shuttle. What they're not able to see is anything around the sides and underneath. The tiles on the underside of the shuttle are the most vital, as they bear the brunt of the heat. Without those protective tiles on the underside of the shuttle, it basically becomes a death trap. Neither the astronauts nor ground control can make out if the shuttle is doomed on re-entry or not. Houston has an impossible dilemma. You basically have two choices. You could stay in orbit, you're gonna run out of oxygen. The other would be re-enter and burn up on re-entry. Oxygen is running out when ground control suddenly makes what looks like a rash and reckless decision. The crew is given the authorization to go ahead for the deorbit burn. We are go for man and start. It looks like NASA is just taking a huge gamble with their lives. But what most observers don't know is that these pioneering NASA astronauts are not alone. During re-entry, the crew enters the ionization blackout, the point during re-entry where they can't talk to the ground. That's the scary part for the people in mission control. They're biting their fingernails and they're on the edge of their seats. For 15 minutes, there is silence at mission control. The more silence you have, the more you know something is going gravely wrong. Then. Hello there, Houston, uh, Columbia's here. 
Young's voice crackles across the radio. Hello, Columbia Houston's here. How do you read? The mission is a success. But observers want to know why Houston seemed to gamble so recklessly with the astronauts' lives. Investigators analyzed the shuttle's flight plan and find Crippen and Young were asked to make a bizarre and inexplicable maneuver while out in space. Why do I still look perfect right on the nominal? Perhaps there is a clue. During the mission, astronauts were asked to invert the shuttle. Rolling the shuttle points the underside to a top secret U.S. asset orbiting the Earth. NASA purposefully maneuvered the space shuttle such that its underside could be photographed by the latest spy satellite, Keyhole 11. Officially, this satellite does not exist. In 1981, the Keyhole satellites were the ultimate in ground observation. You had a very large mirror, eight feet in diameter, so you were able to get incredible, incredible detail of ground objects. Top secret Keyhole 11 is designed to spy in ultra close detail on the tyrannical Soviet Union's military maneuvers. This is the first American spy satellite to be able to take a photograph and transmit it down to Earth so you had real time imaging capability. Retargeting Keyhole 11 to look at the shuttle is a gamble for America as it leaves the Pentagon temporarily blind to Soviet troop movements. It's a huge risk. The NRO satellite was in a polar orbit, and then the, the shuttle in its orbit was, was more equatorial. So they ended up figuring out a way to do this ballet act, if you will. The satellite and shuttle are speeding through space at 17,500 miles per hour in different directions. It's the mother of all moving targets be like standing on the sidelines and trying to hit a baseball at 100 miles per hour with a marble. Young and Crippen expertly maneuver the shuttle into position. The spy camera takes its shots. Mission Control downloads the pictures. The crazy thing is, it works. The NASA team can see the underside of the shuttle and determine that there is no damage to the heat shield. They ended up giving them the okay to come on home.